So getting started today, we're kind of in an impasse here with our spring pixie. We can't really complete the quest just yet that our pixie is asking of us. It's really asking a lot at the moment uh, because finding the particular mobs that uh, this pixie wants me to find is going to be pretty difficult. And I don't actually know where they reside. So it says right here, I caught one by the bee knights. So the bee knights are patrolling an area and uh, he stole my honey. So we need to find some sort of wizard thing. And it's apparently patrolled by bee knights. Uh, and so that's the thing. Um, I don't know exactly where that's at. So we're going to have to do some soul searching to eventually find it for this little cute fairy. But today I want to get back into some more create. Uh, create has so much more to offer us and it could probably help us in that journey. Um, so we're going to utilize this platform over here to hopefully expand our situation that we have going on here uh, and hopefully allow us to get some better power going for the create. Um, so we can kind of move away from um, from water wheels or windmills or whatever else we need to do and hopefully be able to create some uh, some cooler structures. So getting started with this, man, I'm going to need a lot. If I plan on making this crushing wheel, we're going to need a lot of the mechanical crafters to craft up all of our stuff, sort of making it like an, kind of an automated crafting method. So this is going to require brass, quite a bit of brass here which is nice because we've got that already ready and, and ready to go. Um, and this will require some redstone and some polished rose quartz, which is quartz with sandpaper. It can be done automatically with a deployer, but we can also do it ourselves by rubbing rose quartz onto sandpaper. And we make that just like so. So of course to sand it myself, put the main paper here, rose quartz in offhand and just, you know, eat it. No, I'm just kidding. Just rub it together. And of course, that is going to grant us some really nice polished rose quartz. So now that I have all 21 of the crafters made, I've already set up a water wheel here. I even have my engineer's goggles on just to check because I was checking this. If I had three water wheels here, would it be more than just using one? And it seems like it's just the same. So all of these are using one and they're all producing the same amount of stress units, which is perfect. So all I have to do now is build this uh, this structure. And uh, if we take a look at this, I believe it's three by three, like sort of like this. And it would be three up here as well. If I can build up, <laughs> if I can build up to that. Oh goodness. So yeah, building all of these things. Um, and so you need 21 of them in total in order to get this full structure built. And I, yeah, I think I can build it like that. Yeah, perfect. And just like this and then three on top and then three on this side like i said it is a massive structure honestly for a crafting unit like this is a a, a way to craft and so we also need to hook into here so let's take create i should have a shaft and i believe i could just use a, a small cog wheel and i think that this is enough speed to do this Okay, wait, wait, wait. So this is caught up. So it is, uh, it is overstressed. So we are going to need a little bit more power, I believe, to spin this. So to successfully run this, what I did was I just added two more water wheels. And believe it or not, this actually works. Um, with me having a lack of understanding of this, each one of these... I don't know if they all multiply with each other to accumulate enough stress units to be able to afford to do this. But all three of these water wheels are running. And when I put this here, it now works. It wouldn't work with two, but it will work with three. So that's a good thing to know. So three water wheels will keep this bad boy running. And uh, now we can uh, start to craft with it. So now the fun part, and we need to basically point all of these arrows down to here. I went ahead and placed a hopper. Of course, the hoppers look kind of interesting, um, but I need to align these arrows so that way they're all facing, basically running down into a central area where things will be crafted. And that'll be this one right here. And it should craft the item and, and pop it off. And when it does that, the hopper should be able to collect that. So I need to align everything. I'm going to just have everything just facing down from the top, which everything seems to be facing down making sure these all align to the side. 
just like this and on this side. And then once we go to craft in this, everything should make its way to here and start to craft. So what's one thing that we can craft in here? Well, we can actually make the crushing wheels, which is going to be one of our next things that we need to make. So at the moment, I am crafting down one of the biggest crafts here, and that is the crushing wheels. The crushing wheels are going to be so cool, but after we craft this, there's still something else we need to craft. But look how cool this is. Oh, I absolutely love create. It's man. What a cool thing. And this should go in the hopper. Yeah, it should pop it off. Yep, popped it off and went into the hopper. So very, very nice. Now, the other thing that I need to make is in the create mod. And uh, it's something I don't actually have listed over here because it is kind of a later thing and I wasn't expecting to get here so quickly. And that is a flywheel. So that's one thing I need to make and the furnace engine. And we basically will use this to generate a lot of stress units. This is gonna be a way for us to upgrade immediately to having more powerful machines and we can have one central setup and hopefully be able to use this to, to transfer power across our whole base. Now, these are a little interesting because I believe I can place it in like this. And for example, the flywheel is just a solid circle around, but it won't start on its own. You should be able to force the craft though by hitting this and giving it a redstone signal. It's just a button. And then that will start to craft. Um, so if you wonder like, why is it not working? That's why, because you have to give it a red sun signal. That's something that I had, I didn't even know about until later on after playing around with create. Um, but it does show you in the wonder right here or the ponder, which is really, really cool. Like you can see all the different intricacies of this mod inside of this by just holding W over any of the items. So I left my pixie over here and I, I, I made it sit. You can shift right click on it. And I think I've made mistakes. Um, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot of cows. Okay. It's been just constantly breeding. <laughs> oh, it has made this awesome. So I believe I can just add fortune to this, like a lot of fortune. And I could just sit here from the back and start killing a few of these. I mean, enough fortune that it doesn't cost a whole lot. Oh boy. Yep, that's a thing. Oh my gosh. By doing that, look how many souls I got from using this sword. That's a whole lot of souls. Oh boy. Yep. And we could potentially use those later on. So I've started expanding myself out an area here. This is this is going to be really nice. I think this is going to be a pretty decent looking area. Um, and it's large enough to be able to get the furnace engine set up and a crushing wheel in here and potentially get some uh, some actual ore duplication going on because this is a great way to do that. So as far as this furnace goes, it's actually really easy to set up. However, the furnace does need to be running. Like you do need something going to this in order for it to function. So if I go ahead and slip this on, I can place the flywheel two blocks away from here. Bam, just like that, they will connect up. And so long as you keep this hopper going, this will continue running. Now, um, notice just by placing that down, it was in the ground. That's sort of because the best solution for this is not to have this placed directly on the ground. It's to have like a chest uh, of some sort set up so that way you can automate this. So for example, I have a chest here and then I place that hopper right here. I know these don't look like hoppers, but they're hoppers, <laughs> promise. Um, you place the furnace right there. And then we can place the flywheel here on that. And then a couple blocks over, let's go ahead and just place a chest right here. Uh, it doesn't need to be here, but we're going to place it there to hold the support for that. And then we just automate this, right? I just need to automate the furnace. And the standard way for automating a furnace is, of course, having a hopper facing into this side. So this is where fuel is going to go, is right here. And then on top is going to be where our main product goes. And that's just how we're going to get to that. Um, and then the rest is just placing chests there. And this will get you nice and automated. This is like how I'm going to end up automating this whole thing is just like that. Perfect. And of course, make this a double chest. So that way, you know, the, the byproduct is going to end up out there. And of course, that can be a double chest as well. Perfect. 
As soon as we get this going, we'll put some coal in. Of course, uh, if you have a farm or anything, you can use logs. Uh, anything they can burn. And then stone, uh, cobblestone, is probably going to be one of the best things to get placed in here. Not only is it a great thing to be cooked down into, like, of course, stone is the perfect thing to be cooked down into. But this is like, it's one of the cheapest things as well. And there we go. We have a flywheel that is now working because this is running. That's perfect. So something that it can be very helpful is getting this power moved backwards. Of course, I could have had this facing the other way, um, but I could also do this. So I can take my gears, flip it to a vertical gear, and that's going to be facing down. This one can also be a vertical gear. Just like this, it's going to send the power down and then I can place another gearbox down here. And so now I have all of this power being moved down. Also kind of covered, looks like it's supported. And then I can run more this way. So this is, gearboxes are a great way to move power. Also a great way to rotate the direction. Of course, there's other things that can do that, but this works great for right now. So with this setup, I need to set up some crushing wheels and I want to get them set up uh, pretty close to this so that way I can have items routing over this way. Um, now the crushing wheel is kind of complicated and is going to need a little bit of room in order to function. Uh, we can have one consistent power source like this, right? That is running. That's great and all, but the problem is the crushing wheels need to spin in opposite directions and they need to be pretty far away from each other. So let me kind of demonstrate what that's going to look like. Um, so the crushing wheels are going to roughly be about here, which is going to give me a little bit of space back here in order to get them set up properly. And then I also want to raise them um, about three blocks off the ground. Um, and they also need to be separated by two blocks here. So j pretty much just like this. And if I show you what they look like, um, they actually need to be back one here. There we go. And then I can place them on these rods. The problem that we are going to encounter is getting the rotation to be the way it needs to be. So uh, the rotation, this one needs to rotate in this direction. This one needs to rotate in this direction. If I hook them up, they're not going to be rotating in the proper direction. And you may be wondering how I'm going to hook them up. Well, I can actually hook belts into this and directly into here. We can actually place gears that turn these. Um, so just like that, we now have this power that is going to be able to be converted into belts. And I can separate this out, right? And so if I go ahead and place a belt here and here, that's going to get that spinning and that spinning. The problem is, is they're not spinning in the right direction. This one's spinning correctly, but this one's not. So we need to change the direction that it's spinning in. And we can do it a couple different ways. And I think um, one, of the, the, one of the better ways is probably going to be gearboxes. And let's see if we can't get this gearbox to rotate without needing more room. I think this might be able to function. We're going to need vertical, by the way. So these vertical gearboxes. Uh, you can even use the wrench, by the way, to convert regular gearboxes into, into verticals. Um, let's just see if this is going to be enough. It'll be an odd... Rotation, is that going to be what I need? I hope so. Otherwise, we got to do some other wonky stuff. Oh, and there we go. So yeah, I just basically set up gearboxes, and this is flipping the uh, the rotation just enough that, bam, we now have this working. And another awesome perk of doing this is I can now set up a conveyor belt that can run off of this gear here, um, and I can place another conveyor right here. Oh, actually, no, this is spinning in the right direction. So I would actually use, not this one, but I would use this and extend this off because I want to set up a belt that catches things that drop from this. And I want to have that belt catch it and move it elsewhere. So this is actually going to be perfect. So I've been testing this out for quite a while, a little bit longer than I should probably admit. Um, but I've got it just about right where I want this. And I will go over exactly how this works here in just a second um so i made it all the way out to here so i know that i can put this right here and still be fine so let's get our conveyor belt set up basically what i'm doing is this is smelting items um so it's an automatic way of me smelting things i have my conveyor belt that runs from this chest i can put ores in that drops it down into the crushing wheel it's 
believe me, this isn't the best setup in the world. Um, and then all the conveyor belts in the back are sort of running. And then I'll talk about this cog setup here in a second. Um, but basically, I should be able to place a chest down right here. Uh, do I have any chests? It's laying around. I think I put them all in my inventory there. So a chest can go right there. And then I can put a andesite funnel. Because we don't really need a, any, we don't have any need for filtering at the moment. And then I'll stop that flame, which is perfect. Um, so yeah, this is pushing all the way over here. Just to test this out, um, if I drop a piece of crushed iron on the conveyor belt here, after it's been crushed, it should end up on this conveyor belt. Then it will start smelting. And right before it goes into the funnel. Oh, no, never mind. I have to bring this back one. Because it still remained crushed. Okay. So, yeah. These are like the, the little uh, inconveniences, you know, that uh, you you just run into as you're messing around with this mod. Okay. So, I'll just break that. I got to be careful not to touch the flames. Or touch them. You know, whatever. And this should be right where I want this. Right there. Luckily, we have some fire resistance. There we go. And now I can get that chest placed. Oh, goodness. All right. Chest. And a side funnel. And we should be golden here. All right. Let's test this out one more time just to see. Just to make sure. I want to make sure because it's like last minute right before it goes into the chute. It should complete right about in here. If it all is done correctly. And. Done. Perfect. And convert it into iron, which is exactly what I needed to do. Now, let's talk about this setup in the back because it is kind of wacky. Um, I basically have my main source of power producing and I'm running conveyor belts around. And this is hooked into the back of the conveyor belt. We take the uh, kinetic power from this cog and we hook a small cog up to it, speeding it up just a little bit. Then we hook another large cog up to that shaft. And that is going to speed up another cog even faster. So it, it gets, um, I believe it's called uh, sequenti sequentially faster um, so or, or exponentially faster. It, to a point where, I mean, this thing could be spinning incredibly fast. Um, that's just how gears work. It also works in the other direction as well. So you can use gears to, to slow things down to a point where it would take years for a cog to spin in one full rotation. So... Just some interesting cog stuff going on here. And then I, of course, have to invert the power because this can also suck. The fan can suck things or blow things. And so I have to make sure that it is going in the right rotation to be able to do that. So that's why this is set up here. Belts are amazing, by the way. They can be used for so much. So all of that's routing into here. And uh, I can take a breath of air because... We can actually take some ore. It doesn't really matter what type of ore. We got all kinds of different like ore variants. Let's actually do lead, right? Lead, I think, will work. Well, I put lead ore in here. It's going to go up the conveyor belt and it's going to just be tossed. It's just literally going to be tossed. Boop. Just like that. Into there. And it's going to end up over here. And hopefully this conveyor belt is long enough. Like I said, I, I don't know if two or more items matter if it's on the conveyor belt at once. As that wasn't tested. And, yep, it turns right. Just right before it goes in, it turns. Oh, perfect. That makes me feel so much better. And I'm assuming it will do things with the cobblestone. So cobblestone is a byproduct sometimes. So hopefully it'll turn. And this one right here has two on the conveyor. Oh, I hope it does it. Yep, right before. And stone. Perfect. And I, I could just do this with glass as well. So we can put gravel in here. It has a chance of turning in, uh, some of the gravel into sand. And we could also use that byproduct. So this is actually a pretty decent setup for what it is. This is still incredibly bad. Oh boy. Um, this is not good. This is like, there's so many mobs that I think they're dying and dropping items everywhere. This is rough. I, I need to tell this thing to stop. Well, I don't think I'm going to have to worry about me anytime soon. Yeah. Um, even with me working towards killing. I got the, I got these moves, the pixie moves, but 
Oh, this is just... There's so many. It does it so well that, like... This thing is just a crazy farmer. Look at all the items on the ground. Look at that. And then I can use my spell book, which I did set up a new spell that allows me to pick up items that are around me. So all of those items can be picked up. And it's just crazy amount of items. Wow, that's insane. So I am noticing something with this setup because of the large quantity of items that's going in. Um, I am running into an issue where I'm going to have to start filtering things. Um, for example, I need to filter these. Um, copper needs to be filtered. Anything that needs to go into this needs to be filtered. Um, like cobblestone is going to be converted into stone. I think this is platinum that is going in here. And so I need to set it up so that way if I do have a large quantity of them, like, like such as a stack of this, it needs to be wait. It needs to wait on the conveyor belt before it can be turned in because or I'm running into a problem where it's for some reason not smelting the large bunches, right? I think it just needs a bit more time. So we can use a filter for that and I should be able to basically prevent certain things from going in um, like this. I think I'm going to do like a deny filter list. It looks like that'd be probably better. Um, items placed they do not match above uh, will deny okay and accept everything else I think I want it to be a deny list so we'll deny these types of items from going in um, and for example this I probably want to put this in the deny list because I know it's not going to work and I can accept that and I should be able to put that into the filter slot using a brass funnel and now if I toss these items in including that and this and this. It should wait until they're all done. Before allowing them in. Right? So there's that. It'll hold this here. Until it's done fully cooking. Same for all of these. Which actually, this is this works. This is like a lot nicer. Uh, I just want to make sure these all cook. Of course, I, I hope they don't have to wait their whole time. But they probably will like the time accumulated for all of them ah so that one that turned there the gold just turned and look all of it gets to go it just ends up waiting on the conveyor belt that's perfect and so here's a new one that can be added to the filter so i of course just pop the filter off and i can add anything to that list and accept it and then pop it back into the filter and then i'll throw this back on here and everything should work fine perfect so this thing will work with many things if i look up gravel um or actually I, I look up the crushing wheel uh you can see there's tons of things that we can actually throw into the crushing wheel we can throw in all this like armor and stuff that we don't really need from the horse like the horse armors and stuff we don't really need um and there's tons of other stuff as well that can go in here but uh some interesting ones is like gravel right gravel will produce flint and clay balls and sand so if i throw gravel in here we're basically going to be getting ourselves sand that will turn into glass, right? And then we also should have the benefit of getting um, clay balls, which clay balls will be turned into brick, which we can use for building or, or any recipes that require brick. And then flint, which uh, shouldn't have any effect at all and should end up right inside there. But I may have to set some filters up. So if we want a bunch of glass or a bunch of those resources, we can first throw in some cobblestone and then cobblestone will get turned into gravel. Um, cobblestone has a chance of doing that. You can see right here, cobblestone, gravel, pretty straightforward. You can see right here as well. Um, I believe it's, yeah, it's, it's just a straight one-to-one. -one. So cobblestone gets immediately turned into gravel. Gravel will then be processed. So I do need to add gravel to the filter list. But other than that, I mean, we basically have a way of generating tons and tons of glass, which is going to be really, really handy for building. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Of course, if you did learn something, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. Is there something interesting that you learned uh, via this video? Of course, I learn every time I play. So, of course, guys, I do want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And that, guys, is going to go to... If I can get the typed out... There we go. Joe Rosenbaum, thank you so much for your amazing support. I do appreciate it. Actually going above 
and beyond over there on Patreon. Super supporter right there. Thank you so much for your amazing support. And guys, of course, be sure to check out the links down in the description below if you're interested in becoming a Patreon. And while you're down there, I do have an amazing Discord that I would love for you to join. It's absolutely free to anyone who wants to join it. We have an amazing community. I usually do hang out in the public voice chats. It's believe believe me or not, I'm I'm not your normal creator, right? I I do like to engage with my community. So, be sure to check that out and I also do live stream over on Twitch. So guys, I do appreciate it. I'll see you guys in the next episode and as always, thanks for watching.